Thank you very much my introductions. I hope I will meet the expectations this evening. A very good evening to our distinguished speakers here, friends, ladies and gentlemen. I came from a long distance uh, to be here with you all and hopefully somehow it will touch your heart based on subjects that we have discussed about distinctions here. You might have read a lot about it on paper, magazines and uh, awareness program. We live with it. Tigers populations are going down. We have a single male Sumatran rhino living in Sabah, extinct in the wild. And that's all in the last 10 years we could see it. So what was talking about the six extinctions? It is right in front of my eyes. Okay? But first, before I move on, I would like to put a note uh, of thanks to people who have been supporting us clearly uh, over the years, together working on it. And thanks to them that I'm able to produce a lot of work supporting that, and I think it is a two-way thing. The general support of all of you and people like Jeff. In 2017, we had an agreement with the government. Enough talk, they were talking about it, we have rangers on the ground, but we have no money, we have no this, no that. The word no seems to appear many times. So I was sick and tired, I said, okay, we're gonna do something, actions. We signed an agreement, said we will work with you. The big picture is only three. To have a single management in that area because there are too many stakeholders so that it can be pushed to, nominate, to be nominated as a World Heritage Site. There are reasons behind that. Second thing is to have the global park defense system established in that area and supported by a group of people dedicated to the area to protect it. Collect data, everything, supported by the other agencies. Now, if you look at the area On. Okay, the blue line here, that's where Damai is all about. It is about 350,000 square miles. Slightly smaller than Connecticut, bigger than Delaware. So, I'm, if I say any other thing, you would not be able to have an understanding on the scale. Now, that's how big the area we are working on. Small group of dedicated people. In that area, there are three co conservation areas. The first one is Dano, that's why the initial BA comes in, and then Maliao and Imba. These are renowned centers, especially Dano, for researchers. All over the world has been published there. Some of the resources that we have are something like natural beauty. God-given things, what falls come in different signs, and then animals. These are iconic of what we call the flagship species, umbrella species in Kamandri. Dr. Gerardo was talking about insects. That's it. Below the canopy, there are thousands of insects. Remove the timber, the animal might still survive, but the insects gone just below the canopy, above ground. But uh, I would like to look on saving as much habitat as possible by using iconic species. If I use little insects, they will only require maybe two square inch to be protected. You talk about an elephant, square kilometers, huge size, and in, in the process you will be able to save many other things. These are all equally important. So these are the threatened animals found in the area, elephant, the wild cattle, we call it the bunting. It's not rela really related to the bison, but they, I would say they are distinct cousin. Yeah, there are less than 400 found in Sabah of the island of Borneo. The orangutan, as discussed earlier, in the island of Borneo, there are about 33,000, 11,000 are the subspecies found in Sabah. And in Damai, about half the populations are there. 
the bearded pig. Although commonly hunted in oil palm plantation as pests, but they are equally important for the predator. Without which, uh, there will be no prey for predators, the crowded leopard, stuff like that. Single, lone and lonely Sumatran rhino. We have only one left in the wild. I mean, I mean, in a sanctuary that we are doing a, some experiment to collect semen, freeze it, and hopefully we can do some other modern technology together with uh, people from uh, Germany uh, to be experimented, I would say, but we know there are ways that we can do with those in Wayakambas, Sumatra. And then, we have also things like a work together with the Carnegie Group eh, from states, mapping carbon. Along the way, we found that there were so many tallest tropical trees, not tallest tree, but tropical trees found in that area. The tallest one is about 330, 330 feet. Now, we, we know our football pitch, up, the, the size. But I don't know anything about American football pitch. <laughs> so how many football pitch would that be at 330 feet? You will be able to answer me. Most of the area are basically protected in a sense that legally you cannot even touch the timber, the green in color. But this area was somehow won, other than the three core area, over the last five years, we fought for it and got it back there to become that green meat, totally protected. You can't cut any more timber. But that was after they have chopped everything off. And they said, now you can have it yeah. to be protected. Yeah. We have only grasses growing there. Even animals would not survive. When that happened, you, have, you can see on the ground people removing timbers. And that eventually leads to land clearing like this. People taking opportunities to convert this into other agriculture use that would benefit and giving a better return in the per hectares. And with that, it will attract another group of people, what we identify as poachers. They set up camp, road is easy, access everywhere, they move in with motorbike, oh, vehicles, everything, and they set up camp to hunt. Sometimes they intend to hunt smaller animals, but along the way when they establish snare, standard steel snare around, it might hurt bigger animals. And you end up having that in the market, a typical Saturday market in the interior of Sabra, wild meat, in the open. Do you get that, being hunted? These were things that were caught, and uh, we were very lucky during our last trip. Paul Hilton went there, took uh, for taking photographs, everything, saw this injured elephant in form, able to be rescued, having steel snare around one of it, and it was removed because it has gangrene. Okay, it was too long already described as that. But these are the common things that we get to see on the ground every day. And only in September 2019, if you Google it, an elephant found dead with 70 shots. I, I do not know whether those are professional hunters, I mentioned using palm gun, a gun to hunt with 70 shots. I think it must be real misery for the elephant to be shot. Just imagine. But one of the biggest shots was the one that went through here, get out here. That was the big one I think that failed. The rest were just pallets. But still, it's painful. Uh, then we have people supported by global conservations to conduct work on the ground, catching them. But the area is so huge, even if you put 100 people, you might not be able to cover all. Poachers use vehicle, rangers walk. How to catch them? Okay? Some are all rangers, couldn't even run two kilometers uh, with backpack. Uh, so the only thing is that you have to use technology. 
be smarter than them. And that was the introduction of program where we used the global park defense system, for setting up cameras, everything. And these rangers were trained, equipped to monitor it, and then immediately within 30 seconds you get alert message if there are cases of intrusions. Nevertheless, again, setting up camera was never easy. All my life I've been working on wildlife studies. You establish camera about one yard above the ground, depending on the type of mammal you want. If you want uh, small squirrels, everything on the ground, then different angle, but if you want alpha, maybe higher. But here you have to set it about 20 yards above, huh? something like that. Huh? You need to shoot at a different angle so that they don't see the camera and remove it. We lost more cameras every day than what we can install. Poachers seem to, to have waves. We met them, covered all the hotspot access, put up camera everything, put up the three station there, and this was able uh, to address some, not all, of the issues. In broad daylight, they'll be walking like that. Those are homemade guns. We are very good. In Borneo, people are very good in making homemade guns. It costs less than $100. You can dismantle and hide it, nobody knows. At night, the camera also gives us information of poachers moving in with guns again. But the technology helped us a lot. We were able to address it and apprehend them immediately, sometimes in less than two hours, but there are other times about four hours, depending on the distance where the ranger stations. These are some of the things collected as evidence. And you get that also. It's not under Konda, but it is basically a python, small one. You get it? They can stuff them at the back of the car with all those equipment and few of other wildlife moving at night. There are stories that come out in the paper published about success. Unfortunately, most of these things cannot be published in the paper for self-glorifications. For simple reason, under the law, these are police cases. So you cannot move ahead and publish details before the judge make any judgment. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to tell Jeff that, sorry Jeff, I cannot publicize this or that because uh, it's good for donors to see success story, but we can't. But Jeff said, no problem right here, as long as you get them into court, put them in jail, I'm happy. Donors happy. That's good. There are some donors who insist, can I have that on the front page, everything, success story? No, police cases. But we have to leave it. Now, from this program alone, supported by global conservations, I think, the, I would say, one of the big success was it was able to attract other donors. Yes? People love sweet things, but success uh, basically breeds more success. The success of that small incident catching up with them, big donors, uh, a foundation, Sign Derby Foundation, provided support of about 1.3 million dollars for two years to the state government to increase 25 additional rangers using this model. Although they were not under this program, but using this model to support protection of wildlife in the area. That was one thing. The second thing also is that, and this is my final thing, is that because of the establishment of the camera, all these things, it provides information to the police regarding the elephant that was shot with 70 pallets within two days. The movement of those things were able to be traced to the camera that was established here, and that provides information to the police and subsequently able to trace the vehicle to plantations, pick up one, and then subsequently six were arrested. So that basically, I think, is a good story. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a nice view. Anything, we can talk about it later because we have the next speaker to come. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.